All 30 NBA teams enter the offseason with a goal in mind of how they want to go about things to improve their teams, but that doesn't always mean that every team's plan is any good. Some teams commit to making huge splashes, some teams sit back complacent with what they have, and a lot of the in-between goes down too. But every team has its own set of needs, and their goals should reflect that. The issue is that some teams fail to have their plans reflect that, and that brings us to today's video. Today we'll be discussing five NBA teams that will probably end up regretting everything that they did this offseason for a variety of reasons. Maybe they needed to do more, maybe they needed to do less, maybe they miscalculated their needs. Either way, this summer was not kind to them. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first team we'll be discussing today that will end up regretting everything that they did this offseason is the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers have finished in the play-in tournament in back-to-back -back seasons, which is pretty worrying during the final few years of LeBron James' illustrious career. Sure, they made a run to the conference finals two years ago in spite of their play-in start, but that doesn't change the fact that it's not a very sound game plan to try to replicate that with mediocre results year after year. Clearly, they needed to make a splash in in some way, shape, or form with so many ways they could have gone about it, but pretty much they did the exact opposite. Yes, they did re-sign LeBron James, giving themselves another year or two of competitiveness, but that's pretty much all they did, all things considered, which gives off the idea that they're content with what they have. The obvious problem with this is that what they have is a mediocre surrounding roster, not good enough to compete with the best in the Western Conference. Dalton Connect is their best newcomer, which is way too much pressure to put on a rookie that was just drafted, and their second best new addition is... LeBron's son, Bronny? They're not in a position to run it back, yet that's exactly what they're doing. D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves are solid rotational pieces, but it should not be players that the team is locked into keeping either. Both of those guys should have been shopped on the trade block at some point, yet there hasn't been any rumors of trade discussions going down in any capacity. The most surprising part of all is that they were barely even mentioned in reports about teams trying to sign some of the most impactful free agents this year so it's not even a swing and a miss, because they didn't even swing. The next team that will end up regretting everything that they did this offseason is the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets were NBA champions two seasons ago, but ever since that point, they've been another team that has sat back, seemingly getting complacent. Some of their moves a few offseasons ago are also backfiring on them a bit, as the Michael Porter Jr. max contract is looking pretty rough in hindsight, and Zeke Naji's four-year extension worth $32 million is not helping their payroll issues either, as he's barely barely even cracked their rotation, so they're now limited in the money that they could spend, and it resulted in their starting shooting guard, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, leaving for nothing in return this offseason to sign with the Orlando Magic. Their solution to their depleting backcourt depth was to sign Russell Westbrook, who I do believe gets too much of a bad rap for what he's contributing at this point in his career, but he's also not someone who pushes a team over the edge either, and it is reasonable to question how his wild and sometimes erratic playstyle will mesh with a system fully built around Nikola Jokic and his playmaking prowess. Dario Saric was their other quote-unquote big acquisition, and he can definitely play good minutes off the bench as a forward, but the general feeling is that the Nuggets are complacent with getting passed by after winning a championship, instead of being hungry for more, and the combination of bad contracts on their roster and lack of creativity with the splashes that they're making is setting them up for the potential to slip a bit. The next team that will end up regretting the way they went about this offseason is the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors saw their core three that experienced so much together get split up this summer as they sat back and worked with Klay Thompson to get a sign and trade done to send him to the Dallas Mavericks, officially marking the end of an era. Allowing him to walk isn't even necessarily a regret because Klay's best days are probably behind him and the Warriors wanted to get ahead of his imminent decline, but the reason they find themselves 
themselves on this list today is because of pretty much everything else they did in order to try to replace him. All in all, their summer has been very uninspiring for a team that knows what it takes to dominate the league, while also knowing that Steph Curry still has a few elite years left in him. The Warriors are coming off of a season where they missed the playoffs altogether too, so you would think there would be some urgency behind what they're doing in a similar vein to the logic that I applied to the Lakers, but while they have at least made some moves unlike the Lakers, they're mostly just moves around the edges that don't move the needle to the degree that they need. They let Klay Thompson walk, and they admitted defeat on the Chris Paul acquisition from last year by waiving him, so to replace those two, the team signed DeAnthony Melton, Buddy Heald, and Kyle Anderson, who are all just depth pieces at best right now. When Melton is at full strength, he is a pretty quality 3 and D player who knocks down a high percentage of his threes and can pester opposing ball handlers, but he's had nagging back issues for the last year, and back issues like that usually linger for a while, so it's not even fully determined if he'll be able to get back to where he was. Buddy Heald has become nearly unplayable when he's not red hot shooting the ball because of his poor decision making and defensive woes. And Kyle Anderson is a skilled forward off the bench, but none of those players are taking the Warriors back to the ranks of contention. The next team that will end up regretting the way that they handled this summer's offseason is the Miami Heat. You're going to pick up on a theme throughout this video that the teams included are all ones that have a talented core that have shown that they can compete at the highest level, but needed an extra boost to get themselves back there, and just did not do it. The Miami Heat have made a few surprisingly deep playoff runs making the conference finals in three of the last five years, and the NBA finals twice in that span too, so even though they don't have a ring to show for it in that time, they've still been one of the most successful NBA teams in that time frame. A team like that, which has shown that they're capable of it on the big stage, needs to grab that momentum when it's there and continually build until they get over that championship hump. But they too have been in the play-in tournament in back-to-back -back seasons now and don't seem to be actively doing anything to get out of that realm of mediocrity. The Heat st saw starting forward Caleb Martin, who played a huge role the last time they made a run to the finals, leave in free agency for the 76ers, and the only notable signing they made in his place is Alec Burks. They also drafted Kalel Ware in the first round, but just like with the Lakers, it's unfair to expect a mid-first round pick to be the one that elevates a team to a championship contender status. The summer also started with Jimmy Butler seemingly unhappy with the state of the Heat, and nothing they did this summer will likely appease him in that regard, so that's an yet another interesting interesting storyline to closely monitor if the Heat start the season slowly. And finally, the last team that will end up regretting all that they did this offseason is the Memphis Grizzlies. In 2022 and 2023, the Grizzlies were the two seed in the West, seemingly poised to be the next up-and-coming contender in the conference, but that got derailed last season by a combination of terrible injury luck and John Morant's suspension to start the year. Everything should be back on track for them this season with everybody recovering from their injuries, including John Morant, so they'll have their leader back leading the charge, but that's pretty much been their only game plan this summer being to get healthy. Expecting to get back to being one of the top seeds in the West just because you were before the last time you were healthy is pretty flawed logic because a lot of things have changed in the last two years and plenty of other teams in the Western Conference have gotten a lot better, passing them up as currently constructed. The only new notable player coming into the Grizzlies team this year is Zach Eady, who they drafted in the top 10, and for the third time now, I feel like I need to say that it's not fair to expect a draft pick in a pretty weak draft class like this to be the one to elevate a team to being contenders. Do I expect the core of Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Desmond Bain to pick up where they left off and vie for a playoff spot? Yes, of course I do. But they were on a potential contending trajectory, and that no longer seems as viable given their lackluster offseason where they didn't really make any moves of note. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these teams and their off-seasons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.